Check out the instructor's comments at the end of this video for more info. Alright, one thing you can see here, we're going to do a before and after of the ultrasonic where people just put them in there and they think it's going to get everything out of there. So look how bad this is and we'll come back in a second. Alright, we're going to show an area that's uh, overlooked a lot on carb cleaning and that is on the fuel inlet here. And we have some type of needle and seat arrangement that's in here. And it's uh, got an O-ring that creates a seal between that brass and that aluminum body. And then you can see where there's a screw hole for some type of, you know, retainer like so. So I'm going to show you a couple different things on two different models here. So go ahead and zoom in. First off, let's just see how bad we are. We clean these carburetors in the ultrasonic. And what I really want to showcase is still got that varnish right there. Do you see that? Yep. So if we didn't take these out, that's what's in there. And you know, in our other video, we showed how there could even be little screens in there. So th the next big question is, how are we gonna clean it? Yep. The first thing I wanna recommend is, I, I just wanna aggressively scrape this. I'm going to take and start to just knock it loose. Does that make sense? Yep. So now you see what I'm doing, let's watch from above. All right, so you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna break that stuff loose because now here, make sure you understand this. I am not digging this scratch all, if you will, this pick into the aluminum, okay? I'm just basically roughing up, you know, the outside of that and breaking up that varnish. It's going gonna, it's gonna to dig through the varnish before it gets in the carburetor. So you have to have a real ability to know to put, not put a lot of pressure in there. Does that make sense? Yep. Now, to make this process easier, another thing that's going to benefit us here is let's get some carb cleaner on there so that we can let some of the chemical process help scratch that up. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, so that's the first thing is I just want to basically break it free. All right, so let's talk about some different tools that we have access to. First thing you're going to want is you're going to want a drill. Q-tips are going to be a really good friend of ours to get down in some of these surfaces and clean them out. So what we did for years is just take a Q-tip and cut it in half. Put it in your drill here. Like so. And now I basically created a little polishing tool. Does that make sense? Sense? Yep. All right, so you can even see just the little bit of junk I got off there. So at home, this works really well. And then a couple things that you could add to that to help clean that, because some people really struggle with the idea of taking a metal pick and going against an aluminum body because they're afraid that they're going to put grooves in there. And remember, that's where that O ring rides, right? Yep. So if you're a little concerned about your technique and you feel like you're going to hurt that, Another thing you could do is you could use some valve grinding compound and I could take this valve grinding compound and put it on my Q-tip. Does that make sense? And then I have like an abrasive way to do it. Now here's my favorite thing to do because this is still pretty aggressive, right? But uh, go get gritty toothpaste. Some of you guys like that really, like I like that gritty toothpaste that's got, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, uh, Arm & Hammer baking soda or whatnot. It's got more of a grit to it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Yep. That gritty toothpaste does a really nice job of actually getting in here and cleaning as well. So let's just see what this one's going to look like uh, once I polish it up. What am I memory part? Oh, oh okay. keeping it away from me. Always blow away from the workbench and protect your work area. All right, let's take a look at our work. Can you see where now it's really just kind of a little stain? Oh, there There's just a tiny few specks in there. Does that make sense? Yep. But now, and we need to, we honestly in the, you know, in the shop here, we need to check, oh, do you see some crap down the corner? Mm -hmm. So we're not really quite done, are we? Nope. But it's, it's really impressive. It's really picked up a long way. And we put new O-rings in there. This baby's going to be able to come right back into life and it's going to seal. But let me show you one more. This here is from uh, Mac Tools. Uh, this is a professional brush set. What we love about this guy, getting this in a whole kit for us professional mechanics, check that out. So we have the different types. We have nylon, we have brass, and then we have some steel. Well, inside of this carburetor, don't you think I want to be at least amount of abrasion as possible? Yep. Yep. So watch what I'm going to do. All right, one thing that I found to work really well is PB Blaster here. Um, when I use this in corporation of some type of rotating brush or something, I realized that it, you know, it cools what, what's going on, right? Because it's a lubricant, but it really acts as a nice cleaning mechanism as it's swirling around and gets that crap out of there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be able to take this to another level. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of spray some in here. 
And then I'm going to just try and size this up to get one that just fits a little snug. So that one's a little bigger than I want. And now, do you remember when I was using the Q-tip, how I had to use kind of a back and forth motion? Yep. Okay. On this one, what the, oh, that's, that's going to be a real nice fit. Okay. So we don't want to have to force it in so bad that it's, it's that tight. We just don't need that in this application. There is something we need to use a little caution on. Do you see how there is a metal tip on the bottom of it? Yep. Yeah. So just know that you do have metal in there. You can't sit here and get like this. If I do that and I hit the side of that wall, am I going to just absolutely ruin it and cause problems? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I need to be really intentional on what I'm doing here. But let's see what happens instead of the wallowing out with the Q-tip when I go to this brush set. And this is really sweet here. Do you notice these are on that quarter inch drive? So your thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test my tool, make sure this isn't bent real bad. It's got a little bit of a wobble to it, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to be intentional on that. I'm going to go ahead and put this on a clutch and, and not be able to be super, super aggressive with it when I go ahead and do it the first time. Okay, just a little bit on there. And now let's go back and check our work again. Thinking now. Oh yeah. She's clean. Okay. She's pretty dang good. I mean, I can even just uh, just a real light cleanup one more time, I'd say. And do you see in the bottom right corner there where there, it's dark? Mm -hmm. That's stained. That's not any debris there anymore. That's stained. When I look at this and hold this up close to my face, there I can see that. And right there, right in the middle there, where it almost looks a little pitted. One thing we have going on there is that is below where the O-ring sits, okay? The O-ring is going to sit up above that, so we are going to be perfectly fine. So here's my point. Just to summarize this, you have to do this, okay? This isn't an option. you got to think, if I restrict any fuel to the carburetors, every single circuit's affected by that, okay? And that's where sometimes people have a hard time. They, they do a carb job on a multi-cylinder and they're like, God, just something still isn't right or it just doesn't run smooth or whatnot. And it's just a little bit different from the rest. Is that gonna be hard to tune? Mm -hmm. And it's also probably gonna be hard to find. If you want the secret to success in doing carburetor overhaul, it's you do it all. You do it diligent, you do it all, and you make sure not skip this little stuff. Make sense? Yep.